Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice problem with exponential numbers. Or should I say complex numbers, or both. So we have a complex number, 1 plus i, i being the number whose square equals negative 1, the imaginary unit, and we're raising it to the power i. So we're kind of over-complexing the number. It's already complex, and maybe it's not even going to be complex. Remember, we did a video on i to the power i, and it was real, right? Wasn't it? As far as I remember, it was a real number. Anyways, you can go ahead and check it out here. Now, is this also real? Let's go ahead and ask Euler. So Euler gave us a really nice formula for writing complex numbers in a much nicer compact form. So that's what we're going to use. But before that, let's go ahead and talk about the polar form of a complex number, 1 plus i. Now notice that 1 plus i is basically on the complex plane is represented by the point 1 comma 1. Because this is the real part, this is the imaginary part. The imaginary part, by the way, is not i, it's the coefficient of i, which is 1. So we're basically marking 1 comma 1 on the coordinate plane and connecting it to the origin, which basically gives us the modulus or the absolute value of the complex number. And this point basically represents 1 plus i. All right? In other words, 1 comma 1. Cool. Now, what do we do with this? Well, this allows us two things. It gives us the radius or the modulus, which is r. It also gives us the angle, which uh, the number makes with the positive x-axis. So in this case, our angle or the argument is going to be pi over 4 because we have the diagonal. Make sense? So with this knowledge, r being the diagonal, which is in this case, it's going to be the hypotenuse, 1, 1, root 2. Hopefully you know that from, from trigonometry. And even if you didn't know that, uh, even in uh, middle schools in the United States, as far as I know, they teach this basic trigonometry, or maybe in ninth grade. Something like that. So r from here is going to be square root of 2. And the angle, which we can call theta, is going to be pi over 4. Make sense? That's what we need. So if you have that two pieces of information, then uh, co any complex number z can be written as r times e to the power i times theta. That's how we're going to write it. But this is also equivalent to r times cosine theta plus i sine theta. If you look at the expansions of these functions, you're going to see that beautiful identity. Anyways, so since uh, we have the knowledge, we can go ahead and write the 1 plus i as square root of 2 times cosine pi over 4 plus i times sine pi over 4. And if you go ahead and plug in root 2 over 2 for cosine pi over 4 and the same thing for sine pi over 4 and then distribute and simplify, you're going to get 1 plus i exactly. So these two things are identical. It's just written in different forms. So what we're going to do next is raise both sides to the power i. But before that, let's go ahead and use this compact way of writing. We use this compact way of writing this complex number. All right. So we can write this as square root of 2 times e to the power i times pi over 4. Make sense? Pretty good, right? Well, it kind of looks more complicated than 1 plus i, obviously, because we had to use a radical, we had to use e, we had to use i in the exponent, which is kind of crazy. But guess what? Raising it to the power i or ith power, I don't know if that's a good word to say it, but anyways, it's going to be a lot easier. You don't want to just, because this is kind of like, what is this, right? This is kind of like in the air. Like, we don't even know how i is going to interact. But when you have this form, it's actually going to make much more sense. So let's go ahead and do the following. Replace 1 plus i with square root of 2 times e to the power i pi over 4. And then raise it to the power i. So obviously, a couple of things we're going to talk about here. First of all, I want to tell you that this is the principal branch. So we're kind of going off of the principal branch for this complex number. And we're going to generalize it later. Make sense? Okay, let's go with the easy case first. So if you go ahead and 
uh, multiply, you're going to get something like this from here, square root of 2 to the power i. Again, we're going to talk about that as well. And then e to the power i times i is i squared multiply by pi over 4. But i squared is negative 1 by definition, only by definition, right? And then this is going to give us square root of 2 to the power i times e to the power negative pi over 4. So e to the power negative pi over 4 is obviously a real number. Well, what about square root of 2 to the power i? So that's something we do need to simplify. But let's go ahead and do it in the general case. So let's go ahead and write it as a general form. And then we're going to take care of the square root of 2 to the power i. What do I mean by the general form? So when I write this number as square root of 2 times e to the power i times pi over 4, I might as well add multiples of 2 pi. Because uh, on the unit circle, you can make several rotations, right? And sometimes we take roots of complex numbers. So adding 2 pi might not be, might not make a difference or seemingly, right? It may not seem to make a difference. But when you divide by some numbers, you're, you're going to be adding pi or in some cases pi over 6, so on and so forth. That's why it's important to write it as 2 and pi, so multiples of 2 pi. In other words, n is an integer. And then this is the general form. So now we're going to go ahead and take care of the square root of 2 to the power i. So this is the number 1 plus i and we're going to raise it to the power i which is going to give us square root of 2 to the power i something very similar but this time when i's are multiplied it's going to give us negative and that negative is actually going to appear in front of this expression. Make sense? And obviously there is a simpler way to write it by fa factoring out a pi and so on and so forth. But here's the million dollar question. What is square root of 2 to the power i? So that's what we got to find out. So let's go ahead and call that z as a z for complex. Square root of 2 to the power i is z. And then let's ln both sides. Now the good thing about lnning both sides is you can bring down the exponent. And that's what we're going to do. So bring this down and you're going to get ln z equals i times ln square root of 2. Okay, great, but not so great because we don't want z, L and Z, we want Z. Don't worry about it. Z can be written as e to the power L and Z. And now I can just replace L and Z with this and we are done. Guess what? This is the same thing as square root of 2 to the power i. I know some people are just going to do it quickly knowing that e to the power L and something is that thing. Make sense? So let's go ahead and plug that back in here and we're going to have our uh, complete answer. So we have 1 plus i to the power i equals square root of 2 to the power i which is e to the power i times ln square root of 2 and then times e to the power negative pi over 4 minus 2 and pi. By the way since n is an integer instead of writing 2 and minus 2 and pi you could turn uh, set a negative n equal to k and just write it as 2k pi. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.